In this video from Learn Electrics, we'll take a simplified look at 5 volt power supplies and at the semiconductor diodes, rectifiers and other devices that make up the module. In today's electronic households, small power supplies are becoming more and more common. So how do they work? Many questions have been asked, including how do bridge rectifiers work? What is a diode and how does it work? What's inside a 5 volt power supply? How should a bridge rectifier be connected? And why are there capacitors in the power supply and what do they do? Let's begin. Power supplies and the components that make them will come in many shapes and sizes, but understand this video and you will have the basic knowledge that will help you with most power supplies. Shown here are three different styles of bridge rectifier and there are many more available. This is the standard symbol for a bridge rectifier, the component that converts AC into DC, that is to say alternating current into direct current. And it does matter where the relevant wiring connections are made. The basic component is just four diodes arranged in a specific pattern. In fact, some bridge rectifiers are actually laid out on the printed circuit board as four individual diodes. The symbol for a diode is shown on the left. On the right are four discrete diodes that would actually make this rectifier circuit. And with practice, you will begin to recognize the different parts. The bridge rectifier must be connected in a specific manner. There will be two AC connections for the incoming supply, the voltage from the transformer, and a plus and minus for the DC output. Shown here is a small integrated circuit that performs the function of a rectifier in one package. This is a basic schematic of a bridge rectifier, and we can build on this by adding the various components that will make up a power supply. Starting very simply, we need an AC input, and this in turn will give us a DC output to the load. What are the diodes made of? Four diodes make a bridge rectifier, but what makes a diode in the first place? Diodes are made of a silicon material, a semiconductor material. Electrons will move through the semiconductor material if the conditions are right. If not, the electrons will be blocked. So, semiconductor, sometimes it conducts, sometimes it doesn't. The silicon material is doped by the manufacturer to make P-type material and N-type material. And we can make a diode by putting the P-type and N-type together to make one P-N junction. A 1N4001 diode is shown here. It has one PN junction. The diode number begins with the number 1, indicating just one PN junction. This PN junction makes up the diode and it has two ends, an anode end and a cathode end, a positive side and a negative side. You must know which way round these two ends are. Install the correct way and things will work. Installed backwards and the circuit won't work as designed. If the anode is more positive than the cathode, then current will flow through the diode, just like a tap being turned on, and we call this forward biased. Reverse bias is when the anode is more negative than the cathode. Current stops flowing, the tap is turned off. If we now put voltages onto the drawing, it looks like this. With 12 volts applied to the anode and 0 volts to the cathode, the diode will be forward biased. It will begin to conduct. This is just an example voltage. Much lower voltages can cause the diode to operate. And if the voltages were to be reversed, 12 volts on the cathode and 0 on the anode, the diode turns off. It is reverse biased. Generally, we can say that current will flow when the anode is more positive than the cathode. 
There are, however, some diodes that have the specific property of conducting in the reverse bias mode when the voltage exceeds a certain value in the wrong direction. And more on this in another video. Look at just one diode. Each time the anode is more positive than the cathode, current will flow. This only happens every half cycle, so we have only positive half cycles as an output. The bottom half of each cycle is chopped off, not allowed through. This is called half wave rectification. Let's look at how we achieve DC voltages from alternating current inputs. This drawing shows a bridge rectifier, four diodes, producing, for now, a half cycle output. We have an AC input at 230 volts that passes into a transformer. This is a step down transformer, so the output is lower than the input, 12 volts in our case. Now look at the sequence of events and follow the orange arrows around the circuit. Start at the top left. The transformer output of 12 volts has produced a more positive AC output at the top of the transformer. The orange arrow takes us to the top of the bridge rectifier. Current can flow only one of two ways. As this is the more positive voltage, it will flow through the anode, shown red here. It will flow to the load, through the load, and back to the bridge. Again, it has a choice of two diodes, and being more positive, it flows through the red anode towards the negative side of the transformer. The two white diodes are reverse biased and block any current flow. The output is positive half cycles. Now the waveform has changed direction at the transformer. The bottom of the transformer is now more positive. Follow the path to the bridge rectifier, where there is a choice of two diodes. The white diode is reverse biased and blocks any current. But the blue diode is forward biased and conducts, allowing half cycles to the load. These are also positive half cycles. What were negative half cycles have been turned upside down by the bridge. The current passes through the load, through the second blue diode, and back to the negative of the transformer. And the whole cycle then repeats 50 times a second. If we look at what both halves are doing, we can see that we have red half cycles from the red diodes and blue half cycles from the blue diodes. This is called full wave rectification, but as you can see, the output is quite seriously rippled. We need to smooth this waveform if it is going to be any use to us in modern electronics and appliances. To achieve this, we use capacitors, what we call smoothing capacitors. They smooth out the ripples. The larger capacitor, shown here, will absorb and store the peaks when the output voltage approaches its maximum, and then release the voltage slowly as the waveform reduces. It acts like a storage device. The result of this is that the output voltage is maintained close to the maximum voltage. The ripples, if any, are very much reduced. The smaller capacitor shown will take out any interference spikes on the DC output. We can go further and install a voltage regulator, an integrated circuit that will maintain the output at a specific and very smooth voltage. The device shown is a very common 7805 regulator. For an input voltage of around 12 volts, the output will be 5 volts DC, as used for USB devices. If the input voltage of the device has ripple on it, or the input voltage varies slightly, the output voltage will be unaffected. It will be a constant and smooth 5 volts. This is a bridge rectifier module using four individual diodes. We can see the AC input terminals and the DC output side, and the very obvious smoothing capacitors. If we look closely at the diode arrangement, we can determine which are the AC input connections and which are the DC connections. At position 1, 
we have two pairs of diodes. Each pair has an anode and a cathode joined together by the copper PCB track. These are the AC input connections and you will see why in a moment. At position 2, there are two diodes with the cathodes connected together, the white rings. This is the positive DC output connection. That leaves position 3, the two diodes on the outside that have the anodes connected together by the PCB track. This is the negative terminal on the DC output. Let's look at this on a drawing. We have four discrete diodes and we want to identify the positive side, the negative side and the AC inputs. Look at the diode bridge symbol in the bottom right corner. This is exactly the same layout as the diodes shown on the green PCB patch in this drawing. The two diodes on the right have the two cathodes with the white bars joined together and this is the DC positive terminal, the red wire in this case. At the opposite end, the two diodes on the left, we have the two anodes connected together, the negative side of the DC output and using a black wire. If we now look at the top two diodes on their own, they are joined together in the middle, one at the anode and the other at the cathode. Different ends are joined together. This is one of the AC input connections. And the second AC connection is the lower pair of diodes, again joined in the middle at the anode and cathode. Easy to remember. Two cathodes, two white lines together, is the DC positive. Two anodes together, no white lines or white rings, is the DC negative. And two opposites joined together, an anode and a cathode, is an AC connection. A couple of important points with power supplies. Pay attention to the input and output voltages and stay within the manufacturer's parameters. Always try to match the correct size power supply to the load requirements to get the best performance. An overloaded power supply will quickly overheat and may be permanently damaged. And a very small load on a very large power supply may show some voltage instability. We hope you've enjoyed the video and hopefully added to your knowledge. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can always type in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.